Here's President Biden meeting with Philippines President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. That's going to be this afternoon at the White House. The two leaders expected to agree to new guidelines aimed at strengthening military cooperation. Now, the U.S. State Department accusing China of trying to harass and intimidate Philippine vessels over the weekend. The United States says that it stands with the Philippines in the face of China's, quote, infringement on the country's freedom of navigation in the South China Sea. I wanted to bring in our good friend and former State Department spokesperson and Polarish National Security founder, Morgan Ortega. Morgan, good morning. It's good to see you. Your reaction good morning, to, uh, again, another example of an escalation in the South China Sea. Yeah, so first of all, let me just frame the meeting that President Biden has today. Uh, it's incredibly important. As we look uh, at the great power competition between the United States, China, Russia, that we talked about at the beginning of the Trump administration, uh, building the relationship with friends and allies in Asia is incredibly important uh, to countering the Chinese Communist Party. So this is, a, this is a very important meeting that I'm watching today. Now, what's going on with China? Essentially, they are acting like a bully to their neighbors uh, in the Asian region. And, and, and really how they've acted towards the Philippines is, is nothing new. This has been going on for a long time. And the most recent incident you had a Chinese Coast Guard uh, vessel uh, that almost ran into a Philippine patrol boat. Uh, a couple of months ago, uh, the Philippines reported that the Chinese were sending laser-like uh, uh, beams towards uh, towards their ships as well. So th there's an ongoing pattern of harassment. We talk about Taiwan a lot, which is incredibly important. Uh, but to shine the light on what's going on in the Philippines, there's disputed islands and territory there, the harassment uh, of the Philippines Navy and other patrol boats. And of course, you even see that with India. There's disputed land between China and India. So it's important to know uh, that China, the Chinese Communist Party, they act like bullies in their region. And if they get what they want, Cheryl, uh, which is to dominate the world stage, they will be a bully on the world stage. They want the world order to be led by the communists. And you can see how they act towards their neighbor. That should give you a glimpse of how they want to rule the world. Yeah, well, I think they're making it pretty clear that they do want to rule the world economically yeah. and from a military standpoint as well. China is a serious threat, and President Biden does not seem to take China seriously. Morgan, why? I think it started towards the beginning of the administration when Tony Blinken and Jake Sullivan, that's the Secretary of State and the National Security Advisor, met with their Chinese counterparts in Alaska, and they let their Chinese counterparts sort of, you know, lambast them publicly for about 20 minutes in front of the media. You know, the Chinese Communist Party, Xi Jinping, the leader of it, is similar to Putin, um, Cheryl, in that they're going to push and push and push and see how far they can go. Uh, listen, we just had the South Koreans a state dinner. Again, another important, I'm, I'm critical of the Biden administration often, so I do want to give them credit when I think they're doing things right. They just hosted the South Koreans. They're having the Philippines today. Uh, these relationships uh, should go beyond one political party. It's important to build them. Uh, our viewers may not know we have a mutual defense treaty uh, with the Philippines going back to 1951. Um, but the problem is, is that we're going to have to do more. This administration is going to have to do more, Cheryl, than just rhetoric. Uh, the Biden administration submitted a Navy budget that, for example, took our amphibious warships down to 31, which Marine Corps leaders uh, and, and generals have testified is the minimum number. So if you're going to talk big about China, if you're going to host our allies and friends in the region, which we should, you need to have teeth behind what you say. And that means a Navy budget. That means a military budget that actually puts some fright in the Chinese Communist Party, not the minimum number just to keep our head above water. Morgan, I want to ask you about another developing story that's happening overseas. And this is House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. He's going to become the second yeah. U.S. House Speaker to address Israel's state governing body. That's today. So he's leading this bipartisan congressional delegation. This is the 75th uh, Independence Anniversary, Independence Day for Israel. He reportedly told local media if Biden, President Biden, doesn't invite mm -hmm. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to the White House soon, he will invite him to meet with Congress. President Biden at this point, as, as far as we know, Morgan, has no plans to invite Netanyahu to D.C. What do you make of this kind of unfolding friction, if you will? Well, I, I would say let's invite them both, right? He, uh, Bibi Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, has put this in context again, Cheryl. Uh, this is the only thriving democracy in the Middle East, the only one. 
right? And this is our only friend, our only ally in the region, one of our greatest allies and partners in the world. Now, I think it's incredibly important that Speaker Kevin McCarthy went to Israel. Uh, he's traveling throughout the Middle East. He was just in Jordan. You know, Nancy Pelosi actually is the one who started, uh, in, at least in modern political history, of speakers having a profile overseas. Traditionally, that was left to the president. But you know what? It's incredibly important for countries to know that we don't have kings and queens here in the United States. We have a Congress. Uh, we have a House that's led uh, by Speaker Kevin McCarthy and the Republicans. Uh, and our Congress makes foreign policy decisions as well. They have the power of the purse. They have the power, for example, to fund wars um, if we are to get in them. They have the power to fund our military. That constitutionally uh, lies with the Congress. So I'm incredibly proud of Kevin McCarthy for going to Israel, uh, for standing up for our friends and, and for our allies. I think he's right to invite the prime minister uh, to, to, to speak before the House. It's also really important that, that Kevin McCarthy is speaking before the Knesset today, um, because you're, the, we have a very perilous time in the region. I was actually just there. I was just in Saudi Arabia a few weeks ago, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you this is a very different Middle East than when I was uh, working for Mike Pompeo in the last two years of the Trump administration. You know, under Mike Pompeo's State Department, what did we do? We rewarded our allies and friends like Israel and the Gulf Arab states, and we punished our greatest enemy, the number one state sponsor of terror, the Islamic Republic of Iran. We really changed the balance. And what did you see? Four peace deals, the first peace deals in 26 years between Israel and Arab states. Now, what do you see? You see an Iran that has largely gone unchecked since the beginning of this administration, yep. since uh, this administration chased them and chased them and chased them to get back into a deal. So you have Israel looking, and, they're, and Israel is saying, you know, what decisions are we going to have to make for our own security? You know, if America's not going to stop Iran from getting a nuclear weapon, yep. uh, it, it, Israel is going to have to. It's an existential threat to their security. I agree. Morgan Ortega, I, I agree with so many of the points you made this morning. Thanks for it's, letting me go on and on. Of course, anytime. Love you. <laughs> Morgan Ortega, it's good to see you Thanks, this morning. Cheryl. Thank you for being here.